So we have to know where we're going to get anywhere in life, right? You ask Siri for directions. You guys have done that. You make your grocery list, your to-do list, your plans to structure your day. But the thing is, when we become so focused on where we're going and how we're going to get there, we start to lose all of the, the things that make our lives special and the connections that might actually move us further along. Controlling all those little details and all the things on our to-do lists ends up closing us off from growth and truly living our lives. I love this quote. Everyone has a plan until they're punched in the face. <laughs> Mike Tyson. So I want to talk to you about living without a plan or as I like to say, living in the question, I want you to look for those possibilities when you leave here. I want you to celebrate those possibilities. I grew up in New York City, and I started busking, street performing, in the subway when I was just 16. I spent thousands of hours down there playing for people, meeting incredible people from all over the world. But the thing was, no matter how well it went the day before, how much fun I had, I always had to work up the courage and the nerves to go back out there the next time. <laughs> it was something, and I thought it was something in the, people might not like my music today, or the cops might come along today and give me a ticket, or whatever it was that was holding me back. And finally, I got a permit from the New York City Metropolitan Transit Authority. They, they gave me these specific dates and times and places I was allowed to go down, so I no longer had to hustle and find a spot to play, and the cops weren't going to come along and ask me to move it along or give me a ticket. And I still was nervous. I would still go down there, and I was like overwhelmed some days, and I would do my makeup and have my little routine and my thing that I did to get in the right headspace. And I realized after a while that it was actually the connections I was making and all of those experiences. It was the unpredictable adventure of the whole thing that, that had me kind of stressed out. <laughs> um, but really, that's exactly what kept me going down there, was meeting these unfazed New Yorkers and getting them to open up and get out of their shells, and the tourists that were totally unassuming and were like, oh, this is nice, what is this? <laughs> and so I, I just kept doing it, and I loved it. Um, eventually, I realized that to get people to open their heart, I had to have a completely open heart. I had to be just totally willing to go there, to get them to go there with me. And so I started to really sing with an unapologetic raw honesty and share my stories, right? We're all hearing these stories today. And it was amazing. It, things happened where 50 people would start singing along with me, clapping together. They didn't know each other. They didn't know the song. <laughs> and they were a part of this great little cinematic experience. Um, I even once had a homeless man who came up to me after I'd been playing all night and had his paper cup full of coins that he needed to survive. And he came up to me and he poured them in my guitar case. <laughs> I still totally get overwhelmed by that moment um, when I remember it. It just, he said to me, I said, I really can't accept this from you, and he insisted. And he said, no, I'm so moved by what you've done, all the music you've sung, all your words, and I have to give this to you. It makes me happy to give this to you. And all of that happened, those connections that were deep and moving because I was living in the question. I was going, I don't know what's going to happen today. Things are totally unpredictable, and, and let's see. And sometimes it was disappointing because you want something to happen. But even then, okay, you showed up and you did it. You know, even today, I'm like, I have to go up there with notes. Otherwise, I don't know what's going to happen. I might fall over. <laughs> and so you show up and you do it, and you see what works. And the universe is a lot of times is going to bring people into your lives, like people who sing along and affirm and validate my music, or a homeless man that comes along and validates the, that is important for him to hear, for someone from all walks of life to hear. And so. The unknown just becomes this wild and unpredictable adventure. And busking in the subways for me was my teacher of that, was my constant lear learning of living in the question. But it isn't always easy to remember that. And as my career grew and I started, hello, see? Can you see him? The camera probably can. Um, as my career grew and I had to deal with flights and 
rental cars and where am I sleeping tonight? <laughs> All of that stuff. I started to kind of forget that. I had my, my lists and my plan and, and all the things I was doing. And so I started to use a little reminder. <laughs> and I have it on my hand for you guys today too. And sometimes I don't even put it on, but sometimes I, I really need it. And when I draw it and when I look at it, I'm going, okay, everything's fine. And so when I see it, it just reminds me to live in that space where anything's possible. Control isn't necessary, or maybe even gonna get you where you wanna go in life. Have you guys felt that before? You just go, go for something, you have no idea how it's gonna work out, like this TED Talk for me. <laughs> they asked me to do this after hearing a story about me being stuck in traffic in Seattle. And I was in the middle of the Mercer mess. I know some of you guys are from Seattle here today and you've been there. And I was stuck on Mercer and Perry. I had been going to a radio station to um, do a promotion for a show that night, but the traffic was so bad, I never even made it out of my car. And then I thought, how am I gonna even get to the venue on time for the show? And it was, it was an hour. It felt like an hour, and I think it was an hour that I was sitting right in the middle of this. <laughs> I was right about where that truck and that, that black car was when I started writing this, this new little song. All my frustrations of how could I not know any better? I didn't plan for this. What am I gonna do? I'm such a, I don't need to say it. All of that started getting really overwhelming and I, I knew I couldn't call my boyfriend. My boyfriend asked me not to call him when I'm in traffic because I can't stop talking about it. <laughs> I'm a New Yorker. I don't believe in traffic. We take subways. It takes exactly the same amount of time to get places, pretty much. So I don't believe in it. And I, I just thought, what am I going to do? And all of a sudden, I started writing a little song. Perry took me for a fool, dragged my heart out on a late August day. Love has never known a sadder heart Till Mercer made a mess of me And sent me on my way Without all this pain Would I ever know Where I'm from or Where I'm supposed to go Cause I feel like a photograph Like I'm almost real Life all around me Not a thing I can feel And that's about all I had and I sat there and I just kept singing it, getting to the venue and... Thank you. Thanks. So I, I was home a couple days later, back at home in Southern California, and I want to get rid of this so we don't think about traffic. I was back home at Southern in Southern California and I went to work on Google. I had this little idea of how the song was going to go and I was going to find more street names named after guys. I have a couple songs in my arsenal that are a little bit of like girl music, angry girl music. So I was like, I'm going to find lots of male street names in Seattle, and this is how this is going to go, and I'll write, write it all. And Google wasn't so helpful. John Street came up, James Street, you know, and I thought, those just don't sing well. They're too common. Sorry. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, maybe I'll check maps. And I was looking at maps, and I still couldn't find any streets. And I was just trying to micromanage the song, and, and I, I still love those very last few lines. I feel like a photograph, like I'm almost real. Life all around me, not a thing I can feel. And I didn't really know what that meant, but I started writing um, a song with that as the title, and I'm gonna play that for you guys today. I think that's where I am in my talk, so. I've kind of let go of the cards. Um, the song is actually really about what I do. And that whole experience of, of being stuck in traffic and trying to imagine not being there, writing this little song to distract me, became something that was really exactly what I do. And when I tour and meeting people and like, are they gonna like the music? It's still, I'm just older and I'm still doing that same runaround. So here's I Feel Like a Photograph. I feel like a photograph, like I'm almost real. 
It's written. You guys are so great to keep clapping and give me the time to find out. Okay, where am I going? Thank you guys. Um, that song wasn't really even written that day that I kind of decided to let go and, and hold on to it, hold on to the idea and not micromanage it. Or a month later, it, was, it was, took a long time. I even sat down with a co-writer to work on it. And I went to him and I said, can we just find some male street names in Seattle? And he's like, <laughs> You know, I just kept holding out for that to work out. And eventually, what I loved about it became the title of the new song. I feel like a photograph, like I'm almost real. I want to just let you guys know that crafting something without a finishing point is going to be a struggle unless we're open to the ideas and just along for the ride of our art, or the ride of the idea, even. <laughs> um, art, like ideas, can't satisfy our quest to be right or to know the right answer. 
And I think the best art and the best ideas might just leave us with more questions. I know, speaking of, yeah. So I know that this might sound silly and small to some of you guys, but I want to encourage you to draw a question mark on your hand. This is a, a bunch of my friends and fans and people from Twitter and social media that sent that to me a couple of days ago. I said, I want them to see. You can, you can do this any way you like. And uh, if you can't do that on your hand, put it on a little piece of paper in your wallet. Or put it on your wrist. Or somewhere you're going to see it every day. And you can work up, make baby steps to putting it on your hand so you really <laughs> get there and see it every day. But I want you guys to have a token that's going to remind you of all the ideas that you heard today. And, and it might even spark a conversation with somebody who sees it. Or it might just help you take on new meanings as you, as you see it. And you go, well, what's the opportunity in this? What's the connection in this? What, where, where am I going with all of these experiences in life and all these new ideas? And I think it will help you. For me, it's really about being fearless. <laughs> I'm, I was so nervous before I walked out here to talk to you guys, and I did that right before I came on stage. And I think, for me, it's about being fearless, being hopeful, being connected to life, and, and finding all of that meaning. All the talks you've heard at TED today are about possibilities, and meanings, and ideas, and, and how we can do things differently. And I want you to remember them, but then I really want you to make them your own. <laughs> and so I think you should try this out, and, and Whatever you do, make new meanings with all the ideas you've heard today and with all the experiences on your journey from here. And I think you'll, you'll live with it and find new truths so you're always living authentically. Thank you.